Hi, it's Chris. Welcome back to another episode of the tutorial series. So, this topic is going to be important, and I want to give away the key message of this episode right now. Your mount is the most important factor of your assembly, and the choosing of your mount is the most important pre-consideration of yours before you get started. Because with its capabilities, the weight limits, tracking abilities, the motorization, the mount type itself, with all that factors, the mount gives you access to certain areas in this hobby, while others will be beyond reach. You see? Choose well. The optic on top is another factor to consider too, but everything stands and falls with your mount, so let's get started. First things first. This is a tripod, not a mount. The tripod supports everything and needs to be sturdy with the ability to absorb vibrations and stuff. But that's not the mount. The mount sits on top of the tripod. Its job is to carry and to move the optic. Having said that, there are two types of mounts you're going to get in touch with. A. The so-called Alt-As mounts. I call this mount type up, down, left, right mounts and everyone has used some of this mount types before. The name is like that. Alt is for altitude and As is for azimuth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see my previous videos about sky coordinates. Whatever. It's just a fancy dancy word for Alt is up and down and As is left and right. You need examples? This camera tripod, for example, is a very simple though useful Alt As mount. With the optics on top, it can move up, down, left and right. No surprises here. Alt As mounts are great for point and shoot, as they are very intuitive to use. Aim and click. Because of their easy usage, this mount type is often used in combination with beginner scopes. Yeah, I know, this is quite old. This is a beginner level Newtonian scope. It's on wooden legs and the mount itself is that little beauty right there. For reasons of simplicity, it rotates around this axis, for left and right. This is the as coordinate. And then we have this construction. You either shift this lever arm upwards or downwards. The scope will thereby go up and down. This is the old coordinate. This tiny scope even has a fine tuning knob to adjust the altitude very gently up and down. Yeah. Another cool feature of Alt As mounts is that they are almost always weight balanced. If their center of mass is placed above the rotational axis, then everything will be balanced quite well. There is no need for counterweights on most Alt As mounts. And one more plus point, they don't need to be aligned. Place them, turn them, use them, easy as this. Alt As mounts come in every shape and form, small or heavy, simple or motorized. Some of the biggest scopes on earth are placed on top of a Alt As mount. So easy, simple, great, <laughs> why go for another mount type? Problems do start when going after moving stars. Stars seem to move in circles, so if you have an Alt As mount and want to track them, you will always need to adjust two axes at once in order to follow them. And to add complexity? Given different places in the sky, you will need to adjust the axis differently and adjust the changes in both axes constantly according to your current position. But nah, you say, okay, fine, I can do that. But there's once another problem. While following stars through the heavens, your field of view will start to rotate. Well, actually from your point of view the sky rotates away, but whatever. The field of view will rotate comparing to the stars you want to capture. This is called field rotation and causes major headache while dealing with a full night of long exposures. What to do? Use a so-called German Equatorial Mount, or short EQ Mount. EQ mounts are quite a bit of a tricky, but we will sort that out now. First, the simple design goes like this. There are two axes as well. But one axis points directly at the celestial pole. This is the RA axis and we will rotate around this later on. The second axis is called DEC for declination and is mounted perpendicular to the RA axis and mounted on top of it, so it rotates with it. To add complexity once more, you need to place the EQ mount on top of a Alt As mount. <laughs> yep, you heard right. So what the heck and how to use this? So to make it all work, we need to align the RA axis, we call it turning axis, with a celestial pole. This alignment is called polar alignment and we use only the Alt S component of the mount for that. Left and right 
that's azimuth, and up and down, that's altitude. So to simplify things, the altitude axis normally has a small indicator next to it. Lucky us, the altitude of the celestial pole never changes for one place. Uh, that's the whole deal with the celestial pole. So for my location it's like 52 degrees and that gives me a rough first orientation. Okay, um, that's alt us. Obviously we can't use this knobs to chase stars. We only use this adjustments to polar align this mount. To align the RA axis parallel to the rotational axis of the Earth. Nothing more and nothing less. Once polar aligned, we need to take a look at the heavens movement. As mentioned, all stars move around the celestial pole in circles. We therefore use the deck axis to point our scope towards the one circle our desired star moves on. After doing so, we can slew the scope to the very star using the RA axis. And after we found the star, we can use the RA axis and the RA axis only to keep track of the star as we move our scope in harmony with its movement. When first laying hands on an EQ mount, you will probably be a bit confused about the two axes and how to use them, but that confusion will wear off. Motorized mounts then move the RA axis for us, with precisely one full rotation every 24 hours. This allows us to take very long exposures, without moving stars and without field rotation, because you realized already, the scope rotates with the sky, so our field of view does rotate too. So there is no such thing as field rotation with a proper EQ mount. Downside, uh, besides the strange movement of the axis, the EQ mount needs counterweights. See here? It would tip over if not equipped with weights. And both rotational axes need to be under the lowest stress or torque possible. So. A, the scope itself must be balanced around the DAG axis and the scope and its counterweights need to be balanced around the RA axis, okay? Then everything is smooth. Recap both. alt as mounts are left, right, up, down, easy to point and shoot, best for quick observations, daytime, bird hunting, planets, the moon, that stuff. Whatever you just want to gaze quickly, choose alt as. EQ mounts, more complicated, need to be aligned with the rotational axis of the Earth, but highly necessary to achieve long exposure images and avoid field rotation. The mount for deep sky astrophotography. And the most important point, I repeat my initial sentence. The mount is the most important part of your gear. They must be capable of carrying the scope on top. My first mount was able to handle 7 kg but my scope with everything attached, camera, guide scope, cables, second camera, filter, it was way over 8 kg. The result? Just everything was unstable. Every touch, every imperfection with leveling and balancing the mount, every imperfection with the motors was amplified and resulted in ruined images. If you want to observe the sky visually, take a robust mount. If you want to take images of the night sky with long exposures, Take a very robust mount, capable of carrying your scope twice. Everything else will be frustrating, just trust me. So yeah, that's it for the day. Thanks for following me on my road down to the heavens. Hit like and subscribe to see more of these videos. And as always I say, clear skies everybody, until next time here on Catching Photons.